An online article reaching millions of readers has brought up wide discussion on the frustrations in the big cities of China by claiming that 20 million people in Beijing are living a pretend life. Is a real life only a false concept for the people striving in giant cities? Fast-moving urbanization is redrawing the skyline almost every day. In the shadow of skyscrapers and brand new infrastructure, native residents have found that rapid progress has brought dramatic changes to their former life. Are those big cities still their home? How do they cope with so much change? Beijing used to be called a city of promises, attracting countless young people with different dreams. However, many may end up feeling desperate after struggling for years. Is there something wrong with the mentality of dream chasers, or are the new circumstances and problems to be blamed? Cities such as Beijing are now launching a series of policies to drive parts of the population out of town. For instance, removing unauthorized construction and shutting down small stores. How have these policies helped so far? And will driving some people out of cities solve the problems that are being targeted? More than five million people read a recent online article in a single night. The article argued that the 20 million people in Beijing are pretending to live, but that they have a life without decent quality and achievable goals. Some netizens agreed with the writer's ideas and satire, but the, there was also a swift and fierce backlash. One thing is for sure: huge changes have been brought to people's lives by the rapid urbanization of recent decades in China. To discuss these changes and whether it is elusive to try to realize one's dreams in today's mega cities, I am very glad to be joined in the studio by Duan Yanling, founder and curator of the New Tata Future Hub. And Professor Li Jinzhao from Beijing Foreign Studies University. That's our topic. This is dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Okay, welcome to our studio discussion here. This is a very、uh, interesting article, isn't it? Isn't it? In that seven million people were able to read this article instantly. What's the message that this article tried to deliver, Yan Ling? Uh, first, it really reminds how powerful the WeChat, the message, instant message in the internet, is today. Everyone can be synchronized by one message, and a few really can be、uh, resonate together with it. And the power of it, probably something we discussed previously, is to be reminded. Secondly, I think only. This numbers doesn't mean anything. You can, if you want to do statistic, any number you can draw. Twenty millions means the whole Beijingers are living a pretentious life. If I can、uh, like translate that, only question I want to ask to myself is: Am I one of them? Am I doing that? What is a pretentious? What is the truth? What is tr truly feel alive and a living? And、uh, I think just a couple of years ago, I start to. Reexamination, reexamine my life, and I come up, come up with that if we、uh, speak, we talk, think, and do the same thing. And what do we do? What do we think? And what we do is really in line. Then we're pretty much in a real life, and that's something we can live、uh, by or live for. And then I don't think that's 20 million people who are trying to make a better living, better city. It's really living in that pretentious life.、That's、Size does matter,、yeah. doesn't it?、Uh, Jin Zhao,、mm. uh, 20 million could offer and provide 40 million answers,、mm. different one from another. What's your take on the message that、uh, the author tries to deliver? Why was it able? Was it able to produce such a huge impact?、Mm. And why do you think this article has been deleted instantly,、mm. almost? <laughs> Well,、uh, the the writer is a professional writer who has published two books, and he's a very dedicated and serious writer. And this is not the best article he has written,、uh, but very unexpectedly, he got instantly famous because of this one, not because of other articles. And he casually used the number twenty million,、uh, and it coincidentally.、Uh, Meets the, the the rough population size of permanent residents in Beijing, including 14 million who have hukou, mean, meaning registered household rights in Beijing, and also the other、uh, migrant 
workers, migrant people who have temporary residence in Beijing. So uh, uh, pretending, pretentious is a buzzword uh, in internet, uh, social media in China this year. Uh, it's uh, also called the fake. Uh, there are a lot of complaints. Fake I, is a favorite I, word that yeah. tends to be abused and used by President Donald Trump. <laughs> he accused the news of always spreading fake news. Right? Yeah, a lot of uh, netizens in China this year, whenever they complain that their expectations are not met, uh, for instance, uh, the quality of campus life or the quality of a city does not meet their expectation, they will say in a joking way that, oh, I must be living in a fake city or on a fake campus, or I must have attended a fake class. Uh, so, well, the writer can't say 20 million people are living in a fake city, so he slightly changes it by saying 20 million people are leading a pretentious, pretentious life. Actually, the message as summarized very accurately in the introduction of the program is a complaint about a lack of quality and decent living standards in Beijing and also the unachievable goals young people uh, have for their future life. So This I is a long speech by both of you, but yeah. uh, I'm afraid the key word in the title of this article is uh, pretensions or fake. Mm. Now, it seems uh, life is uh, a journey of discovery and rediscovery. Mm -hmm. Throughout the whole long march, one mm -hmm. has to live under camouflage of different uh, sorts <laughs> to protect him or herself from being abused. Uh, life itself is very meaningful, yeah. but it's full of uh, vicissitude. And but you can yeah. face uh, different kinds of vulnerabilities. Is what it, do you think is, of uh -huh. the Im implications of uh, fake or pretentious here in this context? Yeah. Yeah. I think that really uh, inspires us to think what is why this topic is so hard. Maybe it's, uh, on the flip side of it is that people are really hungry for truth and real life. And when this hunger is aroused, I think w the, the question is really the definition. I like the, what you're saying that life is a stage, life is journey, and they always mention there's a destination to go to, and that's why there's an unachievable goal or achievable goal we cannot uh, really define at this stage. Even Angela um, Merkel, a chancellor of Germany, said uh, that Germany, along with other member states of the uh, European Union, should take the destination into their own hands instead of being dependent on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. meaning the United States is no longer as reliable as it was. So mm -hmm. taking the fate into one's own hand remains a mandate, if not a mission for not only individuals, but also big companies like Germany. Yeah. Therefore, you have a p put your finger on a very meaningful and loaded concept that is uh, fate whether we are able to be the master of our own fate mm. or not. Understand yourself, I think that's the beginning point, opening door to know what is real. I think that what is real is uh, to lead a real life, is to understand who you are, then read and live the life accordingly. Like my teacher always say, if you're born into an astronaut, and do be an astronaut, that's what your fate, and be a better one, be the best one you can be. But if you're born as a donkey, you shouldn't be looking for or to be a horse. So understanding yourself is at stage one. And I think that this city, we live in a mirage city. Remember, this city, it's 30 years ago, is completely different outlook, mm -hmm. right? There's no skyscrapers, and we seem to already forget it. And in our lifetime, this is just very short a period of time. We but shouldn't see it as a yeah, real. Yeah, I'm afraid I could disagree with you somehow, because mm -hmm. uh, Ever since the opening of China in the late 1970s, there is one catchphrase that has changed millions of people's lives in China. The Gaokao, uh, the resumption of Gaokao National Entrance Examination, or in other words, knowledge itself mm. helped to change our fate and destination. Mm. And therefore, w the fact that we were born to be a poor guy and you can hardly change your fate may not be true any longer today. Mm -hmm. Armed with the uh, strength of knowledge, uh, we could do what yeah. we can somehow if you work hard enough yeah, and if opportunities favor I your agree. diligence. Yeah, do I, you don't, agree? I don't think the, the key word here is fate. I, I think the key word here is problems of urbanization, the structural problems that these young people are facing in Beijing. We should really take this article seriously and we should really take it seriously why more than 
seven million people are responding instantly and finding resonance with this article. I think they are complaining about this vast expansion of city uh, that has influenced their quality living. Quality living is a very important concept in, Again. in, uh, in international uh, <laughs> urbanization, in world urbanization. So all the cities are striving to make the city livable. So I think if we turn the world in the other way, uh, pretentious life, meaning Beijing is not a livable city, I think that's the key of this article. You could therefore, by this uh, token, have uh, a number of other derivatives, uh, such as uh, deliverables instead of achievable or livable. You have mm -hmm. deliverables. Now everybody expects to have uh, his or her deliverables for the first 10 years, uh, the second decade, so, so forth, in Beijing itself, which mm -hmm. is a city of promise. Uh, whose skyline is being changed every day when you go back to what happened. I, I like your phrase, city of promise, ago. but the fact is a lot of people But is Beijing a land because, lost yeah. or, uh, or paradise lost? Beijing is supposed to be a city of promise. If there is only one city that can deliver the best promise, it should be Beijing. And Shanghai but the and fact, Guangzhou, the first year. Yeah, right? The fact is that a lot of young people come to Beijing with all different kinds of dreams and after struggling here for three years, five years, ten years, they don't see that it's a city of promise. But it doesn't mean that their life hasn't changed for the better. But uh, with limited improvements, they are seeing more problems and they are seeing that I want to use the word precarious. They, they feel that they are leading a precarious life in an unlivable city, meaning their health, their education, their housing, and uh, their promotion, their future stability cannot be uh, fully under their control. So it's not a yeah, matter yeah, of controlling I'm their own fate. I'm afraid 20 million netizens who have read this article also include the super rich guys all those mm -hmm. who enjoy the decency of a middle-class lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Why do you think uh, this group of the large society could also resonate with the uh, complaints and grievances of the vast uh, number of the rest? I think this is really an article more like those popular quiz article, you know, are you a tourist, you know, mm -hmm. are you going to be this and that. So this is something where people pick, pick it up and click and want to check, oh, am I one of them? I'm not. Mm. I think this is just a very instantaneous response. The real uh, reason behind it, I really don't agree that Beijing is an unlivable city because mm. we all live part of the... Well, in terms of Wuma, it is. It is. <laughs> in terms it is. of public that transportation. That is why Gary Lott beat a retreat, early retreat. That is why it is <laughs> yeah. wide. Despite Th that's the that's why also we are air quality, earlier. water quality, food quality. That's why we are doing <laughs> everything we can Housing. from the uh, from the community level, from personal level, from professional level, uh, every level to do something about it. I don't want to do an advertisement for Mobike, but it's one startup can change the entire transportation and lower the p pollution for 10 percent for the city, according to statistic, and be really promising. So maybe I live in my little pigeonhole. So for Nivatata Future Hub, with lots of startups and lots of innovative kids, they come in here from all over the world and stay here. Yes, they do. They have to outlook this unlivable side of it because there's something we are working to change it. It's not something we live there, we complain about it. If you talk about Tokyo, talk about Hong Kong, talk about London 100 years ago, there is a growing pain and we're trying to work on that even more sufficiently. But the one thing about the livable is about do you really find this is city you are surrounded by inspiring people, possible possible teams and possible resources to achieve your goals? I think that's that kind of people may be living their dreams, but they are not living in pretentious life. And I think there's a huge many communities are like that. So in Beijing. what's your therapy? Now we <laughs> tend to have. Uh, um, now we we are all familiar with the Chinese um, popular saying. Many people came to the capital city with an ambition, mm. aspirations, mm -hmm. and they end up making a compromise inevitably because mm. they know a lot That's of... That's life. It's not about a city. Given the uh, conditions and the restrictions of the adversity, 
they have to make a compromise. Otherwise, you know, they'll become an uh, asylum seeker or they can seek sanctuary in the shelter of a temple or a religious place. What do you mm. think of a, a realistic choice uh, for millions of individuals who choose to live and work in the first tier city like Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou? Well, I think here I really have to chip in because we are planning uh, a creative township uh, mm. outside of Beijing as one of our recent projects for Beijing Design Week, which is exciting to see more designing ideas and how it's going to be and if it can be adapted by the government. But most important, I still want to come back to the real topic because it's real. Because it's not a, we, it's government is doing so many policy, new policy making. There's a, a beautiful townships, Meili Xiaozhen. There's a creative cities. Mm. There's a, uh, there's a creative zones, there are lots of a great policy mm -hmm. trying to be distributed really, not to be manipulated, not mm -hmm. to be taken advantage. And there are lots of great policy but never really reach the end for real. And that's a problem. It's not that mm -hmm. the central government doesn't have this great policy about creating, distribute the population to the township, develop the uh, PPP uh, model to create the mm -hmm. city, village, village, city. But there's a way, so what we are trying to work is really how to mobilize the design creative community to combine the policy makers and really make things happen rather than those great policy to be manipulated and taken advantage by real estate developers yeah. or the people who are in the yeah. interest groups. Okay, thank you very Actually, much. You are watching <laughs> dialogue with the Duan Yanling and uh, Li Jingzhao. We're really discussing up. dreams, the realities and discrepancies of a, a life that has been pursued by individuals in their millions in the urban city like Beijing and why an article online has gone viral overnight. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. Let me narrow down the range of discussion and focus on one point, a particular point. What do you think of the diversity of life and diversity of a fate? Because not many people are realistic about their capabilities. <laughs> they will think, I, why should you be so rich? I can be at least half as rich as you by at least 10 million, if not 10 billion. So uh, mm. what do you think of the, um, the swelling ambition and uh, ego, if not self-inflation, of many of the ambitious young people who want to be rich overnight, who want to be a celebrity <coughs> overnight, mm -hmm. without working for hours of 7.24. I mean, they want to become rich and fam famous overnight. What do you think of mm -hmm. their uh, sense of anxiety? I think we should do lots of uh, those uh, inflated uh, uh, overnight dream story information detox first and to really get rid of this uh, really overnight rich daydreaming mentality among the uh, youngsters or people who come into city to seek the fortune and fame and wealth. From my personal point of view, I think there are two stages we probably can help, uh, have been helping me and helping people around me and hopefully more, is there's a, there's a way of saying self-knowledge. There's what you mentioned, the fate, which is understand who you are, how much you really can do, what you like, and that's a very simple question, but very difficult to answer because you're gonna change all your life. That's a per per persistent pursuit. No. The other is self-growth and personal management, and that really takes lots of work. And whatever you do, it has to balance this, because when we are really progressing our life, all those two points are changing. It's like left and right steps. So whatever you choose a city, you really, there's a priority, right? You, pr you prioritize your health, maybe mm -hmm. go back to your parents, take care of them, right? Or but you prioritize your dream, maybe try your luck in a city where your family like support you like mentally and emotionally. There are so many elements to, to really consider to build a life of wealth, abundance, which means health, money, relationships, everything in balance. But if you just say, I'm gonna become rich, and that's all you want. And maybe Beijing is going to be a daydreaming place. Many people are gasping for life for different reasons. That's the focus of today's debate here. Now, yet another major point I'm afraid that Jin Zhao is uh, um, ego, uh, vanity, pretensions, hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it, it means uh, it's very difficult to be true to yourself uh, mm -hmm. given the adversity of restrictions and rule of law, uh, you know, a code of conduct. You have different disciplines, for example, for a certain profession. You mm. cannot be 100% true to yourself, mm. true to your mind and heart. You got to pretend to, uh, for at least one reason, you have to be better disciplined after mm -hmm. the 18th National Congress of the CPC, after Mr. Xi Jinping took office. You <laughs> can no longer drink as much Malta as you did, mm. right? You have to behave yourself, reg uh, I mean, properly, otherwise you'll be 
thrown behind the bars. Mm. At least on the surface. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, but I think, yeah, I think all of you, what you have said, make a lot of sense. But I think still, for a lot of young people, first of all, I, I think it's true there is a sense of uh, rampant materialism uh, and, and, and the desire for a luxurious life without effort. There's a degree of that kind of psyche among young people. Exactly. But more importantly, it's a sense of lack of control of their own fate, their, their own upward mobility. Well, uh, control of one's fate is a big phrase, a big word. Uh, mm -hmm. What about the specific and realistic choice of your wording, like yeah. a sense of fulfillment? Right, sense of fulfillment. I think they feel a sense of loss. You want to be a professor, but the, many the people end pace. up being a right. just a, an ordinary uh, white collar worker, yeah. and lecturer instead of being a mm. first degree professor. What do you think uh, of the ranking in your I don't, university? I don't think it's the young people, first of all, it's them to blame first. I think it's the overall mainstream culture that emphasizes too much on celebrity culture, on materialism, on consumption, not much on efforts, on predictable hey, come on, Jindal, goals. You're complaining about all the evils <laughs> of a secular life. <laughs> secular life is about the secularization. It means Desire. in a secular sense, <laughs> be successful commercially. And you're uh, addressing the issue of a spirituality. But I think we have very good virtues a lot of very good virtues, either imported or traditionally in China. We are sin. Don't forget that we are all sin. Uh, <laughs> but that's <laughs> not our original sin. I don't think we you have original so. sin. We're born perfect, yeah. I think. We yeah. are taught, yeah. young people are taught to aspire to be pop stars, to be superstars, to be celebrities. Because only in that way they feel that they have a sense of control of their own life, of their quality. Uh, of living, but I think it's partly related to the fa vast change, the fast pace of policy. Uh, everybody is easily swayed or easily overwhelmed by overnight uh, policy rules, policy changes. So they feel, for instance, uh, if you have this relocation program, then you can get rich overnight. So a or lot you have of a other good young father, people, you good mother, have a good powerful mm -hmm. enough to help you, to assist you find yeah. a good job. Yeah, I think the problem is uh, so far because the society is changing so fast, we don't have a predict predictable, controllable, steady track for self fulfillment and self development. So everybody is in anxiety, actually in panic. Young people feel if they don't grab something today, they will be left far behind. Be, uh, behind in the future. I mean, in a matter, this is immediate future, in the matter well, of I, three years or five years. Jindal, as if you were talking about the life of a New Yorker, um, where, I mean, in New York, for example. Or we talk about everywhere. Well, actually, it, yeah, it's Urbanized actually, in the city it's have to a, a certain extent, it's a kind of ambition. general psyche among all the middle class people, or people who as aspire to be middle class, or who are reaching middle class. This desire, this fear of falling, that's why I want to come back to my use of word, the precarious life. If they don't try hard enough to move on, then they feel that they are left behind by the trend now, of the you, social Many politicians mobility. in China may not like the idea of having a civil society or an olive shaped society dominated by the middle class mm -hmm. whose demand for rule of law and social justice uh, would be insatiable and that's a strong hallmark of uh, remarkable social progress. China does not boast of uh, a serious uh, history of political science, so therefore we have to copy some of the key concepts from the West, such as a middle class society, where mm. if uh, rule of law and uh, social justice could prevail and could basically protect you uh, and, and your sense of safety, then uh, you may not uh, gasp for life, you may not be breathing for, for, for life and you'll, you'll find the margin for your maneuvers uh, spiritually would be a lot better than, uh, for example, under the rule of uh, autocracy or if not a dictatorship like the DPRK. So do you think this is also an interesting discuss uh, issue for a discussion? Uh, of course, we are not talking about the DPRK, uh, mm. the dynasty of uh, family uh, control. We are talking about the decency of the middle class, mm. rule of law. 
where uh, you don't have to uh, f uh, be obsessively concerned with the uh, forcibly being relocated from one place to another. In my, in my sort of urban uh, living experiences, especially borrowed from uh, to living in Tokyo for a couple of years, um, mm. I think the idea of a city, we need to really understand what our role personally and what these regulation institutions, rule of law are for. It, it seems it, Tokyo is uh, really lack of central government and urbanization design. It's truly coming out of people's, you call the psychic, that don't bother others. Mm -hmm. trying to behave as a decent citizen and the city gonna move smoothly. Mm -hmm. It's a very tall idea and it's really working. And secondly, that they were so smart, they relocate the capital from Kyoto to Tokyo. So leave Kyoto, Kyoto as still the number one tourist destination and today. And for the is to be relocated yeah. from Sydney to Canberra. Yeah, <laughs> so the Beijing is trying to do that. That's, that's from the city level. I think, I think there's this the policy making, it is only assistance. It's our job to create this institution to assist, to regulate the traffic. The police on the crossing road has no responsibility mm -hmm. to make all the driver behave and yeah. the traffic runs well. Ultimately, it's a down to personal Very individual. quickly, uh, the last question. Cities like Beijing now are quietly trying to drive out external populations by mm. removing the unapproved construction of buildings normally for commercial use and shutting down small stores in the name of street management. Now, it, it, uh, this is a powerful um, uh, facelift operation in Beijing alone mm. has uh, driven many out of uh, this capital city. Mm. Now, these guys became a victim of uh, they fell, vi fell victim to the uh, uh, urbanization somehow of Beijing characteristic. What, what do you think mm -hmm. of this uh, consequence, Jin Zhao? Well, it's still an ongoing process, the facelifting process. Uh, but I really doubt... The good news is that their pains may evaporate overnight because they have to go back to their own hometowns. They are no longer obsessed with the pains and the frustrations uh, typical of Beijing itself. I don't know the impact. I, I really don't think that they can actually go back to their hometowns. I have a hypothesis. I haven't done any study because it's still an ongoing process. I think these people are still wandering. Most of these small-time businessmen, small-time restaurant owners and store owners, they're still wandering around in Beijing looking for places to open another restaurant, another store. Probably in uh, outside the fifth ring or the sixth ring because after all uh, they can find better income in Beijing so that they can provide for their extended family Despite or their the absence children of a at home. Call, they can yeah. have their individual dream or I have a dream. After all, a city like Beijing is a place of uh, promise and opportunities. Well, this is the end of our meaningful dialogue with uh, Doyen Ling and Li Jin Zhao. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.